My name is Stuart Kaufman. At age 80, I wrote a story about the beginnings of life. It is about Patrick, Rupert, Sly, and Gus, four early forms of life called protocells. We and all the living world are their children. You will see how each new level of life, Patrick, Rupert, Sly, then Gus, provides a new niche or opportunity for the next new level of life to exist. The existence of Patrick provides an opportunity. Rupert can seize this opportunity and evolve into the new niche provided by Patrick. Life now creates the opportunity for new life to exist in the future. As the ecosystem evolves, the opportunities evolve, and like magic, life evolves to fill those spaces. From these simple protocells, our world has flowered into millions of kinds of creatures. Think of the animals, birds, insects, and plants, and all the unseen bacteria, fungi, and other organisms our planet supports. Each organism enables another organism to exist and evolve further. We are all supported by the conditions of the ones that came before. We are of nature, not above nature. Once upon a time, around four billion years ago, on the edge of Gwandalan lay a sleepy lagoon. Patrick, Rupert, Sly, and Gus lived in the water with the other protocells. They floated around feeding on stuff. Nobody got much stuff because everything moved at the same speed. So stuff was hard to catch, but nobody got mad either. Patrick was a game kid. One day, he felt a pinch and a molecule popped out of his side like a growth, a peptide made of 13 amino acids. He was floating near a rock and the peptide stuck to it. Patrick tugged and wiggled but couldn't break free and realizing he could no longer float, wondered how he'd eat. Patrick looked up and saw stuff floating by. Because he was no longer moving, stuff came to him and he got more. Patrick ate hungrily, then once again felt strange. The stuff's nutrients helped him to divide into two Patricks. It happened again and again, so that eventually there was a patch of Patricks stuck to the rocks, with stuff for everyone. What had happened? Patrick had become the first sessile filter feeder on the earth and started a colony. Imagine, a protocell from nowhere. He'd made something of himself, however accidentally. Getting stuck was an opportunity, and now stuff came to everyone in the Patrick patch. What does Patrick's story tell us about the becoming of the universe? It shows that opportunities only exist if there's something that can seize it, for whom it's an advantage. Opportunity doesn't sit there waiting. There's a coming together, a context, which brings the for whom and the opportunity together. Patricks came to exist in the space we call the biosphere because they were autopoetic, self-reproducing systems. Or as Charles Darwin could have said, an early form of life able to evolve by heritable variation and natural selection. All it had taken was for Patrick to get stuck to a rock. Darwin called this pre-adaptation. Meanwhile, back in the lagoon, Rupert, like Patrick, wiggled around looking for stuff. He was a tough guy. And if he bumped into other guys, he could feed by making a hole in them and sucking out their insides. But it didn't happen very often because everybody floated at the same speed. One day, Rupert floated towards the Patrick patch. He bumped into a Patrick, poked a hole in him, and ate him. From that day on, he became known as Rupert Raptor the first predator on the earth. 
He now only ate Patrick's. His nutrition improved, and he also divided. Soon there were lots of Ruperts in the Patrick patch, which was also growing fast. What does Rupert's story tell us about the becoming of the universe? Well, he created the first food chain in the biosphere. He was also someone for whom there was an opportunity. He could feed on stuff and other protocells, but it was easier to eat Patrick's stuck to rocks. Patrick's provided the context for Rupert's opportunity. And by seizing it, other Ruperts came to exist and feed on the colonies of Patrick's, which also grew in numbers. The lagoon's ecosystem now included protocells, floating stuff, Patrick patches, and Ruperts grazing on Patrick's. Pythagoras taught that everything is number, but can you write an equation for this evolution? Can mathematics help? No, the story is all you need to know. However, the story doesn't end there. Sly, who liked to look cool, was the third member of our protocell gang. He too wiggled around the lagoon looking for stuff. And like Rupert's, could also eat other protocells. One day, Sly bumped into a Rupert grazing on a Patrick patch. By accident, a peptide on Sly's outside attached to the Rupert. Sly was embarrassed and Rupert tried to fight him off, but they stayed stuck. Rupert was hungry so he ate a Patrick. Not wanting to miss out, Sly licked up some of the juices that Rupert had spilt. Not bad, he thought. All I've got to do is stick to this guy. Getting attached to Rupert was an opportunity for Sly, who then also divided faster. Soon there were lots of Slys attached to Rupert's all over the lagoon's Patrick patches. But Sly did more. When he slurped the juices spilled by the Rupert, Sly excreted glue. This helped the Patricks, who sometimes fell off rocks, and as a result were growing as quickly in number. Thanks to the Ruperts, who depended upon the Patricks, and thanks to the glue from the Slys, who depended on the Ruperts, Patricks could now stick to the rocks and multiply as before. What does Sly's story tell us about the becoming of the universe? Well, Sly had come to exist, and his opportunities depended upon the opportunities seized by Patrick and Rupert. But he was also someone for whom opportunity had arisen. Thanks to Sly, the lagoon's autocatalytic little ecosystem became tighter and mutually codependent. In fact, it worked so well that colonies of Patrick's, Rupert's, and Sly's existed in the non-ergodic universe for a very long time. Remember Gus? He was the fourth member of the Lagoon Gang, who also floated around feeding on stuff. Gus was a brainy guy who liked studying rocks. No matter how Gus tried, he couldn't cling to the rocks. But he still managed to feed and eventually divided and started his own colony. One day, Gus floated into a Patrick patch and by holding on to a Patrick indirectly, became stuck to a rock. Patrick tried to shake him off, but couldn't because he could only wiggle. The same happened to lots of Gusses. Sometimes there were two or even three Gusses attached to one Patrick. And because the Gusses were now stationary, they also benefited from the floating stream of nutritional stuff and divided faster. What does Gus's story tell us about the becoming of the universe? Gus was someone for whom there was an opportunity in the form of a Patrick, which Gus could seize. Patrick had already been an opportunity for Rupert, but this did not matter. Charles Darwin also liked rocks and imagined hammering a wedge into them to describe the origin of species. He thought that species drove a wedge into what he called the floor of nature to create niches in which to live. But Darwin eventually stopped using the metaphor. You see, our protocell heroes proved that they could all seize opportunities 
which became niches in which they each thrived without a wedge in sight. The lagoon expanded and created new niches by creating Patrick, then Rupert, then Sly and Gus, who had created niches and opportunities for one another. And so, the biosphere explodes in creativity and diversity. Each something for whom opportunities arise creates more opportunities for those somethings yet to come. There is an unprestatable becoming of for whom's that sees opportunities in adjacent niches. The niches expand faster than the species that create them. This is how complexity emerges. We neither know what will happen, nor even what can happen. You see, we are of nature. We are not above nature. Being of nature is where the magic lies. As we just saw, as our world evolves, life evolves with it into new possibilities. At each stage, what exists now creates an opportunity for what can come next. Our very existence, the millions of species of us now alive, depends upon the existence of one another. The future possibilities also depend upon what exists now. Patrick, Rupert, Sly, and Gus really are our great-great-great-grandparents many times over. We are children of the vast web of evolving life. We create new niches, new opportunities for one another. The diversity of life has increased from just a handful of organisms to hundreds of millions now. As the diversity of life is increased, so has the number of ways organisms can make a living alongside each other. The same is true for us, humankind. 50,000 years ago, we had few options to make a living. Now, we make livings with one another in millions of different ways. The evolution of life is vast and interconnected. Our success depends upon the organisms around us. We, like all other living things, are of nature, not above nature.